Serious Reddit. What situation or issue caused you to walk away from a friendship without another word to your friend again? Our daughters went to preschool together. And so we started socializing. With playdates twice or three times a week for about a year. The kids would play, and we would drink coffee and chat. When I had to take my husband for surgery, she offered to watch my kid. It was the very first time she'd ever watched her without me there. I came back a few hours later to find my three-year-old sitting in a corner looking as if she'd been crying. The ex-friend launched into this really detailed story about how my daughter had repeatedly tried to take a toy from her daughter, and so she'd had to give her a timeout. And my daughter was upset at the discipline, got my kid in the car, and asked what had happened. She said that she and her friend had argued over a toy. Ex-friend had gotten right into her face and screamed at her. So close that she had sprayed my daughter's face with spittle. Then ex-friend slapped her and slammed her into the wall. I pulled over and felt the back of my kid's head. There was a big lump on it. So we turned around and drove straight to the police station. The police interviewed me and my daughter. I later found out that they sent officers to interview ex-friend. And on the strength of their observations, Child Protective Services was brought in. She'd been beating her daughters fairly regularly with a belt. There were lots of injuries in various stages of healing, including a broken rib. Ex-friend got a suspended sentence and lost custody of her two children to her mother-in-law until she worked through an anger management and parenting program. I don't know if she ever completed it. Here's the worst part. I spent two or three hours a week with that woman for a year. And I had no clue she abused her children. None. Nothing she said ever raised red flags. I never saw her threaten or physically discipline her kids in public. Her daughters were very quiet and well behaved. Maybe a little too eager to please adults. But nothing really remarkable. She never left marks in visible places. She said. I'm sorry. But I have my own issues to worry about. After I told her my father had just died unexpectedly. WTF. I'm sorry, that's just fucked up. When I found out he was messaging all my friends privately saying that if they stay friends with me, they will f up in life because I'll take them down a bad path. I honestly don't know why he did slash thought this, but I never spoke to him again after that. Same. Only he gave me a reason because I asked another friend if he had any problems with me and accused him of talking behind my back, which he admitted to. Now apparently most of my friends think I'm horrible and disgusting due to rumors. Yay. She accidentally emailed me when she meant to email someone else. In the email. She was talking shit about me. I deleted it. Cried. Never talked to her again. Good on you for deleting it. I have some fucked up compulsion to keep that sort of shit and read it years later. Only to feel crappy about all over again. I've always wondered what that's about. I also have a bad habit of indulging in memories and playing out scenarios in my head that just trigger the worst emotions in me and make me perpetually angry and upset. I think it's simply wanting to feel something as opposed to nothing. Bad feelings are still strong ones. Found out that a couple of friends of mine had a secret hobby they were keeping behind my back. They were basically pretending to be interested in depressed. Insecure girls who were depressed and overweight with acne, so they would send them nudes and then turn around and embarrass and humiliate them. F that. Like that's just fucking cruel. It wasn't limited to just overweight and secure girls. But that was their main target, because it was more fun to pick on people with low self-esteem for them. That's just straight up evil. I can't imagine any normal person would get off on humiliating depressed girls. I could. I've known other guys who've done similar things. Old friends of mine actually. The friends in question were the ones I replaced the old friends with and I took pride in thinking they were why AI better. I was wrong. Really fucking wrong. One of my best friend's girlfriend that I had known for 3 years, very good friend with both of them, had this crazy thought that I was in love with her and tried to steal her from him. He believed her, and so did a lot of my other very good friends. I told them, if that what you think of me as a person after all these years then f off. This was during a party after we graduated. F her for manipulating my friends. I actually had my boyfriend's friend try and sleep with me. He wasn't in love with me. Just horny. He was also engaged to a friend of mine and still is. 
when I told my so what happened this friend started slandering me to all our friends and told a completely different story. He exaggerated what happened and placed all the blame on me and tried to make himself look like a victim. Three years of friendship was lost because he couldn't keep his D in his pants while his fiancé and my boyfriend were both working. People suck sometimes. Kind of the opposite happened to my friend. His best friend has a super hot GF that was coming on to him while he was in another country. He pushed her back and told her to go to sleep as she was both high and drunk. Then immediately told his best friend. I don't hang out with him that often. But he is absolute bro tier. John has enlightened me to the white man's plight and to the threat of the Jew. I cannot abide my brother bedding a Jew without intervening. If you continue to see that woman I will kill both of you. Probably the darkest part of my life. This was my best friend of 11 years. A surrogate brother. An integral part of my childhood. And he'd threatened to kill me and an innocent woman because of her religion. There were no classic warning signs. No slippery slope. At least that I saw. He just started hanging out with some punk kid. And a few weeks later his head was shaved. And he was a big fan of eugenics. I haven't talked to him since. Chris. If you're reading I'm sorry I wasn't a strong enough friend to get you out ta there. I'm sorry I couldn't keep you from whatever made you so hateful. I hope you've come past your anger and I hope you're happy. I still think of you. Often. You're the reason I survived as long as I have. My family disowned me because I converted to Judaism. Not only to marry my husband but because I felt whole. I haven't spoken to my brothers in 3 years. They refer to our twins as Jew babies. The last family gathering we attended on my side my family admitted their hatred of Jews and my mother tried to fight me. I have a somewhat fixed relationship with my mother, but it's very thin. I will never forgive my stepfather or brothers for the bullshit they have pulled. After several failed attempts to cheer her up slash comfort her during a mental breakdown, I asked her what I could possibly do to help her and she essentially told me to figure it out. It was a long distance friendship and up to that point. She had been showing more noticeable signs of mental instability and it was becoming a burden to talk to her because I became the scapegoat for her problems. I couldn't deal with it anymore. So I stopped talking to her. About 4 years later. She sent me a message saying she couldn't remember why we stopped talking. But that she was sorry for whatever happened. After going through some of her social media. She seemed a lot happier slash healthier. So I welcomed her back into my laugh. We don't talk often. But I'm happy this story has a happier ending. My best friend from elementary school moved away in the kids of 5th grade. I had a terrible time adjusting. But was eager to hear from him again. Over the course of our respective school careers. He would come down almost every summer and we would hang out at each other's places of residence. He was staying with a cousin. Eventually our reunion stopped one year. While I was living away from home. But I grew expectant for the next. We had been friends for so long. Why couldn't we wait a bit longer? When he showed up the next summer, everything had changed between us. We had grown into two complete different people that couldn't connect. Our last physical conversation detailed our plans for dinner. Our last text conversation went like this. Me. Hey. Did you call me? Him. No. Me. Oh okay. Cool. Just checking. Growing apart is a scary thing. But shit happens. I had an almost identical experience. The last time we hung out, I knew we wouldn't be doing it again. And I could tell that he knew it too. Because we could practically read each other's minds. I sent him a facebook message a year or two later, but didn't get a reply. I was living as a roommate in my friend's apartment. First he wanted to make a deal with me. His idea was that I should apply for a place in an elite student dormitory. Because I had a decent chance to get it but not move in. Remain in his apartment as a tenant. Pay him rent. And he would use my room in the dormitory as an office for his startup company. And give me a six pack of beer for this. I told him that first operating a company in a student dormitory will surely attract some unwanted attention. Especially because three students were living in each and the other two students would be a bit upset when a company started working in their room. Second it would be the business of the century to have a free room where I do not live and rent another room from him just for shits and giggles. I asked him if he thought that from them on I will live in his flat for free. 
he reassured me that he thought that we are so good friends that he thought that I will pay him rent continuously but give him my dormitory room for free to use. After I said him to go f himself. His next idea was to evict me from his flat but did not tell me in advance. Because he was afraid that I will beat him up. We were friends for 10 years at that point and I never hurt or threatened him in any way during this decade. After this I told him to go f himself and have not spoken to him in a decade. He seems like a manipulative opportunist. Good for you. He is the most selfish guy who has very high morals and preaches to every one of them. But somehow thinks that the same morals do not apply to himself. My best friend in high school got mad when I didn't take him along with me to a date. When I told him that would just be weird we got into a fight and he said yeah but we are friends. Friends do things together and tried to insist that it's a normal thing friends do. Like he was really, truly mad that I didn't bring him along on a first date. This was really the breaking point though. Because prior to this, he blamed me for causing his depression. Because I wasn't socially inept. And it made it feel bad about himself. Said I wasn't a true friend. Even though I tried to help him with his depression for years. He said a mutual friend of ours who we only talk to about once a year was a better friend than me. F that noise. Also he would just play video games all day and this caused him to nearly flunk high school. I'd try to help him with his work and he'd just brush me off. He wouldn't shower or shave regularly and I sometimes reminded him when he started getting gross and he would be mad at me about it. He had really bad self esteem issues so he wouldn't change for P. E. He just wore his smelly gym clothes under his normal clothes. He was a good guy but I couldn't be his caretaker. I stopped getting high. This is happening to me. Many of my friends smoke a lot. And I mean a lot. Weed. But I've been drifting away from it. And I feel like I'm drifting away from them. Tis a shame. Weed ain't as innocent as many people claim. Everything in moderation. Except heroin. Edit. Lem clarify. I feel like they can't not be high. My best friend of 2 years began making racist comments to me about myself and my family out of the blue and refused to acknowledge that she had done anything wrong. From that incident I finally learned how to stand up for myself and I'm no longer treated like a dormant, so every cloud has a silver lining I guess. When they laugh at your pain and suffering, when you are serious. Her boyfriend raped me and she defended him. I'm pretty sure they are still together. This was almost 3 years ago. A few months back she texted me and asked how I was doing. I told her to f off. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. How are you doing now? One time when I was around 12 me, my best friend, my older cousin, and my best friend's older brother were hanging out. My cousin was good friends with my best friend's older brother. So we were all hanging out, playing basketball, shooting the shit. And my cousin mentioned to everyone that he had gotten a blowjob from a guy before. I already knew this. Because I was that guy. So my best friend and his older brother were curious and asked him who it was. That's when he looked right at me. He stared at me for a solid 3 seconds. My best friend and his older brother knew at that point. My cousin may as well have came out and said it. All I remember is that they kept asking me and wouldn't drop it and I literally had no words to say about it. I have never been so humiliated in my entire life before or since that moment. I went inside and told my mom that I really wanted to go home and we left shortly afterwards. I avoided my best friend like the plague and I moved out of state a few months later. I was gonna move anyway due to something completely unrelated. I couldn't look him in the eyes him knowing that about me. So. This actually happened Friday, but it's been a long time coming. She blew up my phone because of something so, so stupid regarding her boyfriend. I responded and was there for her, even though I was in class. But when I told her to call me because I needed to talk to her about something important, she totally blew me off. Ignored the fact that if called her and texted me about something so useless, I never bothered responding, and I plan on never responding ever again. It just proved to me how little she gave a ref about me. Over the last few months, I've come to realize that I was the only one who put in any effort in that friendship. I was the one who drove to her, who texted her, who was there for her, but she couldn't even do that for me. 
The last time I saw was 3 months ago, and that was because I drove to see her. She's never bothered to make any plans with me, and all the plans I make, she blows them off with the most ridiculous excuses. So, I decided to cut her off. She's a redditor too. It sucks because I thought this girl was one of my best friends. I just feel so. So taken advantage of. You better get some acid cause the sounds like a basic B. My friend of 4 years basically told me I was a bastard and cut contact. I loved to a new town to start a career after college. And I slowly started to drift from my college friends. As you do. It wasn't far away, but we always kept in touch constantly. Almost every day. One time. I was going to come down so we could both catch up and vent about careers and stuff. She asked me to get a bag of crisps on my way to see her. And I said no, because I was with my parents in the car at the time. I'd driven 60 miles, just because we were going to have a night to talk. She said the crisps represented a larger issue. Said I was selfish and rude. She said she didn't want to speak to me anymore. It broke me for months. I questioned everything about my character, and whether I was a mean person. Just like that. 4 years of loyalty down the drain. For what seemed to be the straw that broke the camel's back. I did ask her why she never said anything. And she was equally to blame if so. I'd have thought we were close enough to talk about stuff like that. It still haunts me. I thought we'd be friends forever. I guess I was wrong. I was at a college friend's apartment. Visiting with him and his girlfriend. No booze or anything. Just hanging out. The two of them started arguing over questions he was asking about her ex. To the point where he got so mad he slapped her and she slapped him back but then he punched her in the arm really hard and slammed out of the room before i could say or do anything except to help her put ice on the place that was turning black and blue with pain that was the end of that friendship then and there his anger management issues exceeded our threshold of ability to trust or in any way accept from that point on she and i became much closer friends and I helped her through her tears to eventual better times. One of my friends in college was, when I met him, an affable stoner. I don't smoke, makes me crazy paranoid, but I would sit in his dorm for hours and watch him play Skyrim. After about a year of friendship things kind of turned. He started dating a guy that got him into cocaine and acid and map, which, fine, whatever. But then he started selling drugs. He would buy a ref ton of weed. I'm not familiar with how much dealers buy or sell. But it was like full duffel bags worth. And sell it on campus. We stayed friends for a little while. But then he broke up with his boyfriend. And started effing a girl in tree dealt for her business contacts. He stopped going to class. And started asking me for rides to meet his supplier. Or whatever. I noped right out of that situation. I just stopped returning his calls and texts. He ended up moving to another country and never graduated. Not sure if he got caught and kicked out of school or just dropped out. It bums me out cause he was a really fun person. But I couldn't jeopardize my education by hanging out in a room full of drugs and driving him to meet dealers. I hope he's doing okay though. He will be. That life isn't for everyone. A friend I had never wanted to do anything that I wanted to if we agreed to my plans. They'd be cancelled and rearranged to something she wanted to do. After I didn't get into the program I wanted in school. I wanted to sit around mope all day and watch new girl. She said she'd come over and hang out. But later decided it'd be better if we go swimming. I didn't go. When I cut the line was when her and a couple other friends of mine were going to warp tour. And she was going to come with us. But a week of so beforehand said her schedule got changed and she had to work. Really she just went on a trip with her boyfriend, pics on Instagram. When she became obsessed and tried to steal my life. Friends. Love interests. Family she even converted to a religion she knows nothing about to be like me. She tried to get anorexia to relate to me. When she found out I was a cutter she even tried to do that. She even lied about being raped as a child to make me like her more. I do believe she was ill in some way, but she was freaking me out 